Hello guys, this is Ali Solanki and today we'll be talking about the entire mobile app development roadmap. Now, this roadmap would actually contain every single thing. We'll also be talking about the salary that you can expect after becoming a mobile app developer. We'll be talking about iOS development, Android development, even cross app development. So everything would be talked about in this particular video. So do watch the video till the end. Now, before I begin, let me just tell you why you should be listening to me in the first place. So I have been been a mobile app developer for the last four years and I started this journey back when I was in my high school so that's where I got to know about Android development I started to play around with Android studio and then in my first year I got introduced to hackathons so those are 24 to 48 hour long events wherein you have to build applications so I used to develop mobile apps over there and then I built a lot of projects and got into freelancing so I used to get a lot of projects I used to build applications and get paid for it so that's my entire journey so now let's get right into the roadmap so let's first start with native and cross-platform frameworks so what is the difference between the two native basically is for building specific applications for that platform for example if you are building Android apps those apps will only run on Android those are Android native apps apart from that you have iOS native apps which are only built for iOS and Apple devices so this is the main distinction between the two and apart from that you also have cross-platform frameworks which basically run both on Android as well as iOS and then there are some frameworks which also help you run on other devices like web applications and all of these other things so flutter is an example for this flutter is a cross-platform framework which runs on everything so if you write a code on flutter that code can be run on web applications mobile apps both on android as well as ios and you can even build softwares using that now let's first talk about Android development roadmap. So over there you would have to learn Android Studio and Android Studio runs on two main programming languages. So these two programming languages are Java and Kotlin. So right now learning about Android Studio is quite easy and it's quite intuitive as well. When I started learning about Android Studio, there were not a lot of uh, documentations and the documentation was all over the place. I remember I was in my eighth grade when I got to know about Android development and uh, I tried building some applications with it. Then I got to know that it runs on Java. So I started learning Java programming language and it was quite complicated. And then I just left it for a while and then I again picked it up in my 11th grade. So that was my journey with Android development. But right now it's quite easy to start learning Android development, especially if you have a project in mind, if you know what you're building, then it becomes quite easy to actually start developing Android applications. But you would have to learn Java or Kotlin, whatever you want to go ahead with. Now Java is quite complicated, especially for beginners. If you haven't learned any other programming language, then that wouldn't be the first recommendation that I would give to you. Rather, I would suggest that go ahead with Kotlin and start learning that and then build Android applications using that. So Android roadmap is done. We've talked about Android Studio. We've also talked about the programming languages that you would have to learn now the next thing that comes up is ios native development if you want to build applications specifically for say iphone iwatch and all of these things then uh, you would have to learn xcode now xcode runs on swift programming language now swift programming language it's quite easy to learn and you can probably find a lot of tutorials over on youtube as well as on udemy i would be suggesting some courses that i've watched down in the description box below so you can go check it out apart from that there are some courses of instructors that i really look up to so you can go check those courses out it's not sponsored at all Okay, so now we've covered Android development, we've covered iOS development. Both of these things are native mobile app development frameworks. So now we will be covering cross-platform framework. So cross-platform, it runs both on Android as well as iOS. And uh, some of the frameworks that I'll be talking about, they also run on web, especially Flutter. So let's first start with Flutter itself. 
Flutter was developed by Google and it runs on the Dart programming language. Right now it's open source, you can see the entire Flutter repository on GitHub. By the way, if you are thinking of becoming a mobile app developer, then I would highly recommend you to learn Git and GitHub because it is really important to understand how to maintain your code and upload it so that others can collaborate and add their own things to your code. So make sure to learn Git and GitHub before you start with any of these things. Now Flutter would arguably be uh, the easiest framework in this particular list. I started learning Flutter in my second year or so and uh, that's where I developed a lot of applications. I developed a show world film directory, I developed a guest in me that all of these things are available on the Play Store. So you can go check these applications out and apart from that I also developed a lot of different applications for other companies as well. So Flutter actually helped me in understanding all of these things. I also understood the backend part of the thing. So how frontend and backend gets connected. And this is mainly because Flutter is very well integrated with Firebase. So Firebase is specifically built for the backend side of things. So if you're starting to learn about mobile app development and you don't want to get into the native Android app development or native iOS development, then I would highly suggest you to go ahead with Flutter. But there are some other alternatives to this the first one being react native so react native is another cross-platform framework which helps you develop mobile applications for both android as well as ios now if you're thinking of doing a uh, web development uh, you might have heard about react js react js is a framework which was built specifically for developing front end of web application so the entire react ecosystem it was built by facebook and whereas flutter was built by google so if you are choosing between any of these both of them are really good in their respective sectors now let's talk about the salary part for all of these things we'll talk about android development ios development flutter development as well as react native so you can get a proper idea about which path to choose from so let's hop onto my laptop and learn about these things okay so over here we have android developer salary in united states so over there the average base salary is somewhere around hundred thousand dollars to hundred and twenty thousand dollars apart from that let's look at android developer salary in india currently the average base salary is around three to four lakhs per year and uh, if we just go over to uh, flutter development so this was native uh, android development also you can notice that uh, if we search for ios developer it would probably be higher than 3.5 lakhs let's just search it and see so let's just convert this to per year and yeah, it's 4.2 lakhs average. So if you are thinking of getting into iOS or Android development, iOS development generally pays more than Android development. Next up, we have Flutter development. So over here, we can look at uh, Flutter development salaries in India, and that is close to 25,000 per month. And uh, that is a range that is followed by Android developers as well. Apart from that, if you go over to React Native, uh, now this jumps to around 4.8 to 5 lakhs. The reason for that is because uh, there are a lot of jobs for React Native and Flutter is quite new. Flutter has not been there in the market for a long time. That's why if you see Flutter developer salaries, it's quite less as compared to React Native developers. So that was it for this video. If you like this video, then do press the like button, do share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more such content. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.